It just reminded me when you said that. Uh, last month, my wife and I went to San Diego and we were on the beach. We sat there for probably four hours. And there was two girls in front of us that sat there and took selfies of themselves the whole time. <laughs> and Please. then people next to us, two guys were doing selfies. And then everybody around us is doing selfies and sharing this story of them at the beach. <laughs> you got it. Like, yeah, oh the, I, I mean, that generation, you know, will, they naturally will do storytelling through their pictures and their movies and everything. And I don't even realize, but instinct, see, because these social networks are encouraging us to do it, we're doing them, we're sharing our stories, and they become addictive, not just the, the, the watching and the listening and the looking and absorbing but also the doing you know yeah and these youtube channels of people they get on and just talk and they share tell stories and there's an article i was reading this woman she's like 32 she had a youtube channel and she just did lip gloss different lip glosses every day <laughs> she's like a 40 million dollar company now selling lip gloss <laughs> wow <laughs> awesome so that's why yeah they've linkedin profiles if you can get you only get so many characters, but if you can tell a little bit of your story in there, it engages people and then they keep reading your profile to learn more about you. So one thing I do with all my new LinkedIn connections, and that's that's regardless of whether they are in my, as you call, I would call it niche, but you call it niche. So even if they're not in my niche, it doesn't matter, but I send an email to every single LinkedIn connection and say, here's a little bit about myself. And I usually, well, the story I share is about my mom and dad. You know, my dad was Dutch. My mother was Anglo-Indian. And um, we'd lived abroad for a while and we came back to Amsterdam in the Netherlands where I was born. And then my father was being posted overseas again. And the choice was either London or the US Virgin Islands, right? Well, my mother had such an English upbringing because she was, although she was Indian, and she had dark skin. She kind of spoke English like the queen almost. And she loved anything English or British. So of course she chose London. And since we moved to the UK, I've been to the US Virgin Islands and I know the difference because in the UK it rains almost every day. And we might get a week of dry weather, that's about it. But of course the US Virgin Islands, and I know it's a bit different after all the hurricanes now, but of course, it's a beautiful island and it's warm and it's dry a lot of the time. So I shared this little story only to just, it's not on my profile, but I send it in an email to, to ask them to share something about themselves. Uh, and, and my reason for asking, I said, it will enhance our virtual connection, you know. Um, and very often I get some lovely, amazing stories. And then I go back to them because I've read their LinkedIn profile and this the story they share with me is not on their profile. And I say, why don't you put that in your summary? And they turn around and go, you know something? That's a brilliant idea. Yes, I will. And then one guy shared um, this story, which was he, he, he works in the kind of, he's a consultant in the medical profession. And um, he helps all these startup companies. And his story was that in his exam at school, he, the day before he had to do his exam, he broke his arm and it was his writing arm. So he had to then tell a teacher to write the answers for him through the questions out on exam day, because he was there with a broken arm, couldn't write. And so the only way he could sit the exam is tell the teacher, please write for me and I'll tell you the answers. Well, needless to say, he didn't do very well. So from that day when he broke his arm, his career path went in a totally different direction because I think he was going to be a dentist or something, you know, that was his plan. And now he's ended up running his own business, do, having his own consultancy, he's loving it. And, but his story, in fact, his story is on my podcast. I do a podcast called Share Your Story and I interview business owners. It's a business owner biography. They've got less than nine employees. And if you all have got less than nine employees, come on the podcast. You've got an invitation. Any of you are very welcome because I'd love for you to share your story 
with the rest of the world and inspire other people to start their own business. And um, so he shared his story there. And his name is Bob Rupra. He's a, he's an Indian guy, but he's born in the, in the, well, he was born in India, but he lived in the UK for most of his time. And he's become such a good friend of mine. And we're probably going to do some business together. But it, I met him at a networking event. I then went and through and asked his story. He then shared his story with me. He's appeared on my podcast. I saw him at another speaking event the other day. We're going to do some stuff together for his clients. And actually, we've become really great friends now. So just by asking people to share their story and share your story a little bit, you, you have no idea where it might lead. Yeah. Yeah, it's not an aggressive way to get clients on LinkedIn, but you build long term relationships, which lead to longer term business deals. Absolutely. And referrals. Well, it builds trust as well, you know, and yeah. it does this. I know it's overused and it's corny to say people do business with people they like, know and trust. Everybody knows that saying. And, you know, that trust has to build in the beginning. And if you share something of yourself first, then people are more willing to share something of themselves and be vulnerable as well. Sometimes I've had some yeah. incredible stories, really vulnerable stories that people have shared with me and I've never met them. Yeah. <laughs> You know? Yeah, if you ask people to share their story and tell them why you want to learn about them, they respond. So everybody's gone on mute, I know, but um, yeah. any questions that have come up, has come up for anybody? This is Doreen. I don't have a question. I just want to have a comment because when I first started with Ted uh, several months ago, I was going through LinkedIn and there was a I guess some kind of conference with all the LinkedIn people and you were on it. And so I thought I might as well connect with LinkedIn experts. And of all the ones you wrote a message to me saying, tell me a story about yourself. And it was just engaging. So I told you a story about uh, speaking, my speaking fears. And then you wrote back and shared a story about fear and walking on fire or coals <laughs> and <laughs> so even and what was neat is that when I see your posts I appreciate it because you haven't really like come back to me and tried to sell me on something or get me to follow you or I mean you know like try and sell me something I just have a good feeling about you that's what I wanted to say fabulous fabulous thank you for sharing that great story I had, a, I had a question actually. Um, so you talk about the, the value of stories and with LinkedIn's ability now to post videos, has have you gotten any feedback or do you have any information on like how effective it would be to do video stories versus just a, a written story? Great question. And I'm sure Ted will have some ideas about this. I mean, so video is fabulous because there is nowhere to hide, right? So you're, you're seeing people's expression, you see their eyes, you see their facial movements, and you have a real sense of connecting with that individual when you see them speaking on camera. And this for me is a massive bonus plus point. I'm not suggesting do everything on video, but I think to show something of yourself and be authentic and, you know, um, be able to be transparent by showing yourself on video is actually a really fabulous way to get across to people. And I've only done a few, but I definitely want to do more. And, you know, there is there are so many different topics I would like to talk about. <laughs> um, I want to do something different that might add value to people. So I'm still, there's about three different topics I'd like to talk about, but I don't want to do them all. I want to, you know, share, I'm, I'm on a short, well, I don't know, I've started a journey uh, following uh, the fact that a friend of mine, uh, he shared with me 
uh, a Netflix documentary for me to watch called The Minimalists or Minimalism. Uh, Ryan Nicodemus and Joshua Mills. Uh, what's his surname? Mills. I know I can't remember how to pronounce his surname. But anyway, these two guys that started this journey on minimalism six, seven years ago. And it's actually made a massive impact on me. So I'm kind of contemplating, do I share some stories about how this is affecting my life? Do I share some stuff around storytelling? Do I talk about, you know, my product and my servers? Um, you know, just kind of figuring out what is what will add value. Definitely, definitely do not want to do kind of promotions. You know, I don't want to go, come and use my product. You've got to buy from me or adverts that I'm, I'm ag not against it, but it's not what I want to do because I want to give people value. So think of something that might be a bit off topic in terms of your business, something that's a little bit more personal and share that on video on LinkedIn's native video. And I think it's a big bonus and not many people are doing it. So if we all start now, uh, we're definitely going to be ahead of the curve. Yeah, I haven't seen anything on LinkedIn, anybody doing videos or I haven't been notified. But Facebook me. every day, you got these people, <laughs> just, they do their rants and some of them are really good, but other people it's like enough already. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I just wanted to add really quick. Next time, instead of asking somebody, what do you do? I'm going to say, tell me your story and see what comes out instead of let's trade sales pitches. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yeah. Love I just it. say, what tell, a great me something, idea. tell me something about yourself I wouldn't find in your LinkedIn profile. And a lot of yeah, people that, would respond. That's what Michael, that was the phrase he used with me. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That works really well. I wonder if, um, can you all hear me? Oh, yeah. Yes, I see wrong. it blinking. Sorry. I'm not, not used to all this technology stuff. Um, You're doing great. That's a joke. <laughs> You're doing um, great. <laughs> I'm just wondering, um, instead of just asking a story, um, going back to Joseph Campbell, who, who to me is the god of uh, storytelling, asking them what is the barrier in their life or what is the, you know, what's, what's holding you back or what's the pain or something. And you, you do have to know a person a little bit first before you can get there. But if, if you approach it first, uh, if the first point of contact with you and the other person is the fact that you're talking about, for example, a business problem, then um, after you make some kind of relationship, then I would think the next thing to do following Joseph Campbell's model is to find out, well, not just what is their story, but what is the, what is the dragon that's in their pathway right now? And I found that when people start talking about that, they really, and then they really get into it and it gets emotional and then you know how you can help them. And then you can talk about how you can help them. This goes back to not just telling your story, but rather um, Joseph Campbell talks about, we should be, we should be the wizard in someone else's story. And so the story is about them, not about us. For example, the, uh, Yoda is the wizard who helps Luke become the hero, and heroes, uh, and Luke is the real, um, the other person from us. And, and in uh, Lord of the Rings, it's Gandalf is us. We're the wizard that helps Bilbo Baggins get through his journey. So I'm just, I'm just wondering about, I guess a question for you is, Michael, is... Um, <clears throat> Where do you switch roles from what is your story to maybe I can, maybe I can help you become the hero of I, your own I, story? I love that. And you are absolutely right. At some stage, that has to appear in the journey, in that discussion. And my advice for that would be, it, it usually would not be the right question to ask with the first contact, but it could definitely be a discussion that you have on a video call. Uh, I call them a discovery call. 
So at some stage in my journey with my new LinkedIn connection, whether it be any regular connection that's invited to connect with me or a prospect, I will invite people to a discovery call. And the discovery call is nothing else but to discover something more about each other. And usually I start from the premise that I want to learn about them and what is, what is it that they're looking to achieve. And certainly in that discussion, it's totally appropriate because you've now already had, you know, some touch points online. You're now seeing each other perhaps on a video call or maybe even face to face um, over a coffee. And you're building some of that trust up and people get to know you a little bit or have got have already gotten to know you a little bit more. And it's totally appropriate to say, you know, what are what are some of the things that you're looking to achieve and that's or what are some of the things that are holding you back? And and perhaps ask them to begin with, how how are you overcoming some of those things? You know, and so tease out, tease out the gremlins that they have for sure, but also perhaps invite them to share how they're looking to solve these today, because you might discover that they already have somebody that is helping them with that. Uh, or you may then discover that actually they haven't got anybody and they don't know what to do next. And that's when you can come and be, you know, Gandalf or anybody else yourself who can assist them on that journey and take that next step if they're interested. Yeah, I find if I share something vulnerable, they share something back. They'll say, oh my gosh, this guy's not perfect. Then they'll share something back with you. And that opens the door to the deeper discussions. Definitely. We're talking quick little LinkedIn messages back and forth to start these conversations. And then it opens the door to those discovery calls. Hey, Michael. Yes. Hey, Thomas. Hey, hey nice, nice to uh, virtually meet you. And you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your, um, for your presentation. I'm a firm believer in what you're talking about. The number one issue I've come across with my clients or prospects is they're just not doing a good job telling their story. And um, I, I actually speak about um, using storytelling videos to, uh, to increase engagement. So my question is, do you have any good samples of folks on LinkedIn um, that have used what you believe to be effective storytelling in their summary? Yes, I do. And I need to check back who. Um, yeah, I do know of somebody. If it doesn't create a lot of work and it's possible to maybe take some screenshots uh, to get to Ted that he can forward to us or post in our uh, Facebook uh, group, which might even be more effective, Ted, um, I, I think it would be helpful. I, I help people rewrite a lot of LinkedIn summaries and um, I'd like to do a better job with regards to incorporating some storytelling. I just like to see for someone that's been doing this longer, what you affect, what you consider to be effective examples. Sure. I, there, there is one particular lady who, I'm not sure her profile is there. I'm gonna just have a quick look at her profile. Um, and I can give you the link of her profile. She does a, an absolutely fabulous job of ongoing storytelling. Yeah, the and trick is our summary only has so many characters, so we gotta use them and then get them in the welcome message I share stuff like that. Yeah, so her profile isn't isn't that great in terms of storytelling. But and I'm gonna share her link anyway, but her her um ongoing storytelling. It's Rebecca Bell, and I've just shared the link in the chat box. But if you go and look at her activity, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting some, is it my sound gurgling? Um, yeah, if you look at her activity and some of the conversations that she has started, you may need to go back. She's quite active in terms of liking stuff. If you look at her posts rather than all activity, then um, you'll find some really, really interesting discussions that she has started um, 
there's one particular one where she had uh, where she talked about or oh, apparently rising at 5 a.m. meditating and then doing some vigorous exercise are all habits of highly successful people. After a freezing cold shower to invigorate your mind and body, you enjoy a light breakfast of green juice and an egg white omelette. You are then fit to conquer the world. Oh dear. It's hard to read these, I don't know this word, pious reports regarding the habits necessary to win at life because I'm not very good at any of them. And then she just shares some other stuff around that and she had like 152 likes and 31 comments on it. And she only has a modest, you know, connection group. But it's, there is one part I totally agree with you, your summary, and have a look at mine, you know. Just have a look at my summary and you can see what I've written in there in terms of a bit of a story. And, but there is that ongoing narrative that needs to take place as well. And you know something? I'm still experimenting. I'm still not that good at it. I'm still learning from others. I'm re learning from Rebecca uh, about how to cre create that ongoing narrative in your posts as well. I, I, I hope I made sense. But um, there is one other person that I will get. There's a few people I can think of without my intervention who did a really good job of sharing their stories as well. They're few and far between. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anything else, anybody? You know, I um, I'm in a business group here in Los Angeles, and um, one of the uh, ladies there, she has a hard soul, and she's hard to connect with. But she did she did a presentation uh, a few weeks ago. And she said, you know, I don't learn, normally tell my story, but, but um, I'm going to do it today anyway. And she did. And it, it really helped me connect with her. It helped everybody connect with her. I recorded, I recorded that, uh, her speech and her talk was about business coaching. And, um, and, I, and I, I pass it on to everybody. I said, this is worth listening to over and over. I, Send it to everybody in the group because it was brilliant. Um, it was it wasn't anything like sh it was it was not practiced or anything. It was just out of her heart, mm. and it was really great. So and so I thought about this, and uh, I'm joining another business group here uh, two weeks, and it's really great. And I and when when it's my turn to tell to say something, I'm going to tell my story just like she did. Brilliant, you know. It was really incredible. Storytelling is so powerful. And I, I think, you know, my question is, you know, how, how, do you, how do you do that on your LinkedIn profile? But I think the best thing, how do you incorporate that into your LinkedIn profile with your limited words? And I mean, I just did some bullet points just to say a little bit. But, um, you know, I guess the examples that maybe you can, you, that you know of and we can see them, that will even be better. What I do is I drive them through my welcome message. I say, you want to learn something interesting about me? Go to my LinkedIn friends page. And on that website page, I tell my story in detail. Right. I just, you know what? I meant to do a friends page. I haven't done that yet. It reminds me to put that on my list of things to do. It's on the to-do list. Yes. <laughs> Huge to-do list. <laughs> I'm whittling Ted, away. You... I, I was just... Ted, have you experimented with um, putting a lot of like a short blurb in your welcome message instead of the link? And just curious if you. Um, oh, Chuck disappeared there. I don't try. I try to keep the welcome message fairly short because if it's too long, people think it's a sales pitch. So you just want to start little conversations. I, I was just curious though if you uh, do a short, like a very short thing in the welcome message. Com just contesting it to uh, driving them to your website if you have like higher engagement or not. Yeah, I get a lot of people that visit that LinkedIn friends page. I ask them, you know, tell me something interesting I wouldn't find in your LinkedIn profile, then visit my LinkedIn friends page to learn something interesting about me. And I see them from Google Analytics. I get a lot of people, and I get a lot of people sign up for my free LinkedIn course on that page. Right. Okay. 
if you engage them with a short message and then invite them to go to that page and tell them why, a lot of people do. Welcome, Scott. Welcome. To, uh, thank you. Thank you for. Uh, I'm. I'm still not. I'm still not totally uh, out from out of the anesthesia. I had a root canal done this morning. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're here. <laughs> Hi, Scott. You know, this is my thing, so I'm here. Good. Good. Any other questions for Michael? This is Doreen. I work with people and their stories, their stories about why they're so afraid to speak. And mm -hmm. wow, there have been, you know, they, but it's a narrative that they carry with them. It's a negative narrative from the past. And my job is to help them change that narrative or somehow find value in what happened or have some kind of understanding so that they could have a whole new experience of themselves and be able to have a transformational and I guess that's part of being the wizard I just realized <laughs> helping them change their story so anything about changing the story Michael yeah it's fascinating because you know we've got beliefs about ourselves and we've got beliefs about the world around us and these have been built up over many years of conditioning and you know some of those things will take you know need somebody like you coaching them through that step by step rather than you know expect them to change their story overnight but actually the most powerful bit about I'll, I'll give you a short story and that is I, I invited my wife to come along to a to an event in London where it was called the million dollar voice it was a South African coach who was going to teach us how to tell better stories actually and I'm, I'm forever learning so I was interested in going and I invited Claire my wife to come along and then in the second part of the day, he asked us to spend four minutes in front of the audience and share our story publicly, a bit of our story. And my wife hadn't anticipated this and she was very, very nervous. In fact, she was looking at all sorts of ways to get out of speaking. And, you know, she left it right because everybody went, yeah, I'm next. I'm next. Yeah, I'll go next. And and she kind of held back and held back and said, oh, I'll get out of this. I don't need to do this. And then she wouldn't speak to me. She was look, giving me daggers and, you know, it was my fault. I, I got her there on the false pretenses to, you know, and then eventually she did get up. And actually she totally honestly was very vulnerable and shared that whole thing that happened with her that afternoon when she learned she had to go up and speak and didn't want to. And she said, oh, you know, I've got to now. I've run out of time. I've got to share something. And she, she literally, literally shared how she felt. It was really honest. And actually, it turned out to be the best short talk of the afternoon. And everybody went up to her and said, congratulations. Well done. She, what, what, me, me, me? Yeah, you, you did a brilliant job. That was the best talk. And because she was totally vulnerable, and I think, if people can release that part of themselves to just be vulnerable and even admit that, you know, I'm really petrified of doing this, but I'm pushing through it. And these are some of the reasons why I haven't done that. And these are some of my belief systems that I've created over the years. But, you know, Doreen has helped me to break through them. And here I am. And I'm not perfect, but this is what you get type of thing. If they can get to that place to begin with, then my wife came back from stage and sat down and she went, I can go and do that again now, you know, because she had a massive release and and she was honest about it. So and now every month she speaks in front of a business net women networking event that she runs and she's doing group coaching with them and 
she's just building her confidence and it's just such a wonderful thing to see people blossom from that so yeah encourage them to be just authentic honest and open about what they've gone through because people really 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 appreciate that absolutely you you describe the kind of groups i lead where people do get up but i also just figured out something from what you said by having the new experience you have a new story yeah mm -hmm. thank you <clears throat> fabulous thank you yeah i highly recommend if you can go to one of doreen's things it's amazing that speaking circles and the work doreen does because your stories come from a place you don't even know exist and it's in a safe environment mm -hmm. it's a tra transformational event mm -hmm. and you watch the watch your recordings and it's like what well, where did that come from because you think oh i'm going to talk about this when i get up on my turn and this mm -hmm. whole different story comes out of you <laughs> it's awesome I did a quick video of a, me leading a speaking circle. I just took a two minute clip that I just posted to LinkedIn. You could take a look about, I just talk about listening being one of the keys to being in front of a group. Fabulous. Did you post it through the new app? Yes. <laughs> yes. I've got to do that. I have to check it out. It's so easy and it's fun. Good. I'll have to try it. That's our challenge now. Well, any other questions for Michael? So Michael, I had a, a quick question. It's not necessarily LinkedIn specific, but I see on your uh, presentation, you talk about whiteboard animation. Um, maybe at some point, I'm just kind of curious about to hear more about the effectiveness you found and when are the best kind of stories to tell with that. Yeah. So I don't know if that's for now or for another time, but I'm curious. Well, I'll just share just a little bit of a story about a bit of research that they did. There's a company in the UK called RSA Animate, and they're probably the ones who launched whiteboard animation, certainly, I believe, in the UK, if not the world. And it's the Royal Society of Arts, and they, they have these speakers, and they, years ago, this was back in 2007, Eight, they they were doing these uh, animations, these whiteboard animations, and I contacted them actually, um, and they said they they quoted some colossal amount for doing them, and they said the lead time was like twelve months. Anyway, this company did some research. They had two, they had two a control group of students, two groups of students, and one of them watched a talking head video, and the other one watched a whiteboard animation video whilst they were also hearing the voiceover, of course, off the talk. And they then did a test and asked them a series of questions online and said, what do you remember of the talk? Um, so to the group who just watched the, the, the um, talking head and then the group who watched the whiteboard animation. And the amazing thing was there was a 15% increase in recall. Now, 15% doesn't sound much, but in terms of education, that is huge in terms of recall, that you're able to recall that. And literally what happens is that when people watch a cartoon coming to life on screen, there are a number of things happening. And some of you will be familiar with NLP. You've got the visual, auditory and kinesthetic going on all at the same time. So you're watching an animation. So you're taking the cues into your brain that goes in one part of the brain. You're listening to the audio. That's another part. And then you also get a feeling about it, not just about the words that are being spoken, but also about the images that you're seeing. And there either could be you don't like it. It's still an emotion and it's going to be memorable or it is. I'm really liking this. Either way, you are going to remember it because there is this again, the mo the, the sensory um, impulses that are happening in your brain, the dopamine, all of that is firing off at the same time. So you've got the VAK, visual auditory kinesthetic going on, it will be memorable for longer. And because it's also a bit of fun, it touches, seeing cartoons come to life on screen, it touches the child inside of us. And we're still all kids. At some level, we're still all kids. And when that touches, you know, that child inside of us with a bit of a cartoon and it's expressed well, 
you're going to remember it. So yeah, whiteboard animation is a great way, I believe, or any kind of animation that has cartoon in it. But I use whiteboard because you've got a bit few other things going on. And it's the one thing that I can do with my Illustrator. I don't do the drawings, but I do all the production. So I can do that, I could, but I can't do the, you know, like the real 3D animation. I haven't got the skill to do that. But that's not why I do it. I just like the medium personally, and I enjoy it. Have you tested that in your LinkedIn profile, putting a, a video like that? Yeah, I've I've done different tests and and I've when I've been in development of coming up with a different idea, I share it to LinkedIn or Facebook and get people to to give me some comments. In fairness, I, you know, LinkedIn and I love LinkedIn. You you don't always get a huge amount of feedback coming back from people because people are very interested in just kind of posting, posting, posting. Uh, whereas actually I've found that Facebook people are more willing to to kind of go, yeah, I like that or don't like it or why don't you try this or why don't you change that? And um, very often the feedback that I get isn't always that helpful. <laughs> you know, I kind of got to believe in what I'm producing because I'm developing stuff in my mind that's perhaps a bit you know, no one has seen yet. So I'm kind of pushing the boundaries out a bit and doing things differently. So yeah, it's it's not been that great. It's been mixed results that I'm getting in terms of feedback, but I will keep trying to definitely. Yeah, I've posted some videos in my LinkedIn profile itself, and I don't think anyone ever clicked. On it, so no. <laughs> not very often. The only thing I did, I did an infographic about LinkedIn groups versus Facebook groups, which was I used a cartoon character we all are familiar with, which was Batman and Superman, and Batman being LinkedIn and Superman being Facebook. And I did this whole comparison and how, you know, Superman was basically beating Batman. And I've got that one on my profile, and I get a lot of comments from people saying, oh, I really like your, your infographic. And but it's a story. Effectively, it is a story of what goes on there. And it's and I shared I did a post a little short article in LinkedIn and I share that as part of my communication with people new connections they eventually get that and it's the most watched article liked and commented article that I've ever published because people are attracted to the kind of cartoon like stuff I guess it reminds them of their childhood at some level. Great. Thanks, Michael. Pleasure. Yeah, check out that. That was a really good post, Michael. I remember that one. <laughs> Thank you. That was good. Any other questions for Michael? I guess not. Definitely connect with him on LinkedIn. Share your story. Love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome to hang out. We'll be going around now. We'll have their turns if you're interested or you can well, jump I, up. I, you know, you've got your process and your group and I, I love what you're doing here. It's absolutely amazing and well done for all of you for showing up as well and, and being committed to improvement and learning and growing. That's really amazing to see. But I'll, I, I will jump off. I'll, I'll send you the PDF with the two slides. Um, I just shared uh, a link to Stephanie Snade, which is one of the people that I, I couldn't quite think of her name. The one of the people I was thinking of who did a really super job in her summary of sharing her story. Yeah. Um, so have a look at that, check that out. And if there's anything else I can think of, I'll ping it over to you, Ted. And okay. uh, thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for doing this. This has Love been great. Love what you're doing. Take care. Thank Bye. You. Bye now. Let me see how can I get off. There you go. Stop sharing yeah. and then close. Bye now. Bye.